one spot in the WBA finals has been clinched. There's one to go. And if you want to take all, shooting the lights out begins right now. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Shooting Lights Out on this October 7th, 2024. Your boys in the building, and yes, winner take all game five for a spot in the WNBA finals. Because one spot has been clinched. We will see that game take place up in New York. We will get to them and how they got to the finals in a minute. But first and foremost, we're going to do a little thing different. We're going to go around the hardwood, but it's going to be a little different because we're going to go around the WB because a lot of awards was taken up. And we want y'all to want y'all to make sure that y'all know what's going on in the WBA. So let's go around the hardwood. As we go around the hardwood with the WNBA, Tiffany Hayes, sixth player of the year. To others, you'll notice as six woman of the year, or in contrast to the NBA, six man of the year, the most valuable bench player for the WNBA, Tiffany Hayes. Uh, she had a stellar season. Congratulations to you for being the sixth player of the year. We have a sportsman award, and that goes to the uh, Los Angeles Sports, Derika Hanby. Congratulations to you and uh. I wanted to look this up and see what this is about because it sounds like something similar to the Watt Payton Award for the NFL. Uh, I do believe it's the Bill Russell Award if this is in the NBA. The Kim Parton Sportsmanship Award is presented every season to a player who exemplifies the ideals of sportsmanship on the court, including ethnic behavior, fair play, and integrity. The award is named after the late Kim Perot, who helped the Houston Commons win WBA championships in 1997 and 1998 in the league's first two seasons before passing away in August of 1999 after a seven-month battle with cancer. So this is an award you would like to have. And Dorica Der- Hanby won it. Great listen to her. It says, in her 10th WBA season, Hanby averaged a career highs of 17.3 points, 9.2 rebounds, and 3.5 assists per game. She started all 40 games and led the Sparks in points and rebounds per game. The 6-3 Hanby earned her third WBA All-Star selection. She has won this award for the first time. She was named the Kia Sixth Player of the Year back in 2019 and 2020. So congratulations to Director Hanby. Uh, you got yourself a bronze medal in the Paris Olympics for three on three. Now you put yourself up in the sportsmanship award. Congratulations to Rika Hanby. Now we all know what this was. Kia Rookie of the Year went to none other than Caitlin Clark of the Indiana Fever. The only thing is she wasn't unanimous. Rookie of the year, like Edge Wilson was unanimous, was pretty much the runaway MVP. She was the runaway rookie of the year. Uh, somebody of the 67 votes, some one of the 67 votes did vote for Angel Recess, the uh, rookie of the year. Uh, I I would like to know why, you know, I would like to know the reason why behind that, if I'm being honest. You know, this is crazy. Kate and Clark received 66 of the, of the National Panel of 67 Sports Writers and Broadcasters. Chicago Sky 4, Angel Reese received one vote. I mean, it'd be, I want to know the reason behind it. You know, I was on here 
raving their injuries flat for the first half of the season. Second half of the season, it wasn't the same. So I had to switch it up and go and go to Kate and Carr. So what was the reason? I just want to know the reason. I don't care who it was. What was the reason behind you voting for injuries? As we get it, when it was clear, cut, and dry that Kate and the Clark was Ricky Adil. Okay, I'm this we gonna we gonna keep it a buck. We keep it a hundred over here. We all know Kate and the Clark was Ricky Adil. There was no debate about it. That debate ended when the second half started. And we seen what the people were doing, we seen what the sky was doing. The fever was going up, the sky was going down. We seen it. We we watched it with our eyes. We saw two teams going in different directions. So what was the reason for injuries getting involved? Now I'm not gonna be upset about it. You know, hey, somebody felt injuries were good. Yeah, I just want to know why. Just tell me why. What give me a basketball reason for why injuries got that vote? If you can give me a basketball reason why injuries got that vote, I'm good. I am good. But for me and what I know about basketball, Kane and Clark got all 67 votes, if I'm being completely honest. Kane and Clark got all of them. If we're being honest with each other, Kane and Clark got all of them. Nevertheless, it, it went. She got. She did win Rick of the Year. Her, her story, Rick of the Year, by the way. Okay, recorded the most assists in a single season, recorded the most assists in a single game, became the fastest player to reach 300 career assists. This is just her first year. She already got 300. She already got 300 assists, and this is her first year. This is literally her first year. She already, she's already over 300 assists. Think about that. Became just the third player to average eight plus assists per game in a season. The youngest player to lead the league in assists per game. Became the, became the first player to lead the league in assists and three point maze per game. Made 122 three point field goals, the second most all time and the most by a rookie in a single season. Became the first rookie to record a triple double. That was against my New York Liberty. Ranked first in points per game, assists per game by a rookie. Ranked third in rebounds per game by a rookie. That was the only category that Angel Reese led, and she led the entire WBA in. It was just rebounding. Scored the most points by a Ricky in a single season. Led the FIBA to a franchise record to franchise records in points per game, assists per game, and three pointers made per game. Set the FIBA set the FIBA franchise record for three points made, points scored, and double doubles. Only player to record seven hundred and fifty plus points, three hundred plus assists, and two hundred plus rebounds in any forty game span. Total eight, 20 points, 10 assist games, the most in a single season. You cannot deny what Caitlin Clark brings to the table. Yeah, there have been some victory, all some back and forth between why Caitlin Clark's getting all this notoriety, why everybody's. Well, when you're a Ricky and you have this accolade right here, you can see why. She is a baller. Okay. So I want people on both sides, Kate and the Clark fans and non-Kate and the Clark fans, I want y'all to understand this. Does the media overdo it with the Kate and the Clark coverage? Yes. But understand this. She's worth the coverage because she is balling. She can ball. There's no if, ands, or buts about it. Look at this. This rookie did all this in her first year. Angel Reese did what she did her first year. Now, Cameron Brent, when it got one of the sold the Tony, yeah, I want to see what she would have did with a full 40 games because she was leading the lead in blocks. You had one player leading the, leading the league in assists, which is Caden Clark. You had another rookie leading the league and rebounds, Angel Reese. And you had another rookie before she got before she suffered an ACL injury back in June, I believe, in Cameron Brent, who was leading the lead in blocks. This rookie class is something special, and Kate McCart's the head of it. There's no difference. She's the she got her team into the playoffs. They went twenty and twenty. That's the first time the Indiana Fever has won twenty games since 2012, which is the last time they was in the playoffs. Ironically, so Kate McCart, you did your thing, girl. You did it. You deserve rookie of the year. You got it. And not only did you get rookie of the year, you also are on the our rookie team, along with Angel Reese from the Chicago Sky. Speaking of Chicago Sky, 
Camila Cardoso is on the rookie uh, rookie team. The LA Sparks, Enrique Ar- Jackson is on that team. And Noreen Fesby and Noreen Fibish from the New York Derby is on the uh, rookie team. And speaking of our not only did we get the all rookie team, we got the all defensive team. Second all defensive team for the WNBA, led by the uh, Kinetic Suns, Alicia Thomas, the Minnesota Lynx, Alina Smith, Seattle Storms, Neka Lagumake, New York Liberties, John Croy Jones, and Phoenix Mercury, Natasha Platt. That is second team, but the first team. Look at this first team, y'all. Look at this first team. Nafisha Kaya of the Minnesota Lynx, the defensive player of the year. The runaway MVP and unanimous MVP, by the way. Asia Wilson of the Las Vegas Aces. Easy Magnaball, the big center for the Seattle Storm. Dejane Carrington, the two-way guard for the Connecticut Suns. And, of course, from the New York Daily, Brianna Stewart. Look at that first team defensive team. Good Lord. How are you going to score on that team? Now, that's what we'll, if that team was ever put together, how would you score on that team? That's what I want to know. Because all of them. So the, Magda Bond is a hell of a shot blocker, along with Brianna Stewart and Asia Wilson. Nafisha Kai can block shots too. You got four shot blockers on the team. Nafisha Kai can D you up on the outside and in the inside. Brianna Stewart too. Asia Wilson, she can move her feet and then dip. Disney can't just fix all so let's watch what she did to the opposing guards including Caitlin Clark that girl can be that girl can play some defense okay that girl can really play some defense but that is your first and second to all defensive team for the WNBA and that would do it for this edition of around the hardwood all right we're gonna take our long commercial break we're gonna take a one commercial break here we ain't gonna be here too long because we got to talk WBA semifinals. One spot has been taken for the WBA finals, and there is another one need to be taken, and it will be taken in a game five. Stay right here. We'll be right back for more shooting. Lights out. I, I <laughs> love you, you <laughs> morons. <laughs> you kiss on the block, <laughs> new addition, dear, whatever the law firm is. <laughs> Sincerely, the U.S. Supreme Court. Ben Affleck, Matt Damon. Go f*** yourself again, Jason. <laughs> Join Ryan McCarthy. I became a Jets fan because Kurt the Frog was my favorite Muppet because he was green. And the Jets wore green. That's how I became a Jets fan. And Dustin Henry. ESPN is cashing all in on let's pay a few personalities and we'll just kind of fill in the gaps. As they walk you through all of the world of sports from their perspective. The Albany Empire, it's a literal circus. No credentials required. Where, Ryan... Say the tag. Where you don't need a press pass to talk sports. Every Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Central on YouTube and where you can find all podcasts. WWE Shop is your online source for all things WWE. Be a part of the site, man, and score wrestling gear for big events like WrestleMania or SummerSlam. From current superstars to legends, from Raw to SmackDown to NST, don't miss this chance to shop for the most awesome WWE merch. Shop for the best deals as well as WWE gift cards and say big on your favorite items. WWE Shop at Fanatics Experience. Cool McCain. You thought you wanted Gunther against Chad Gable, but you didn't. And I'm going to tell you why. Chad Gable would take everything that Gunther's done and bury it. The Playmaker. It was on site. AJ Styles walked out there seeing LA like, oh, okay, man. We, LA Knight hopped out the car. Let's go. Yeah! Break down everything in TNA, AEW, and all of the WWE programming. Join these two Kang. Monarchs of Wrestling, live every Monday 
at 6.30 p.m. Eastern, 5.30 p.m. Central on the Play Caller Sports Talk YouTube channel. Join the transporter to Hades. Your butt and gut becomes one. Join the reformer of hooker whores. This is my daughter, Placenta Booty Johnson. Join the bronze car. And ever you are in distress, mm -hmm. take off your baseball cap and throw it in the air. Join your very own superhero of broadcasting, Chris Bass. So whatever color the crown they get, they palm it and do two circles, <laughs> and that translates to, I can be the black people. As she takes you through the week's paces in Baseline. Live every Saturday at 8 a.m. Eastern, 7 a.m. Central, 5... <laughs> No, Pacific Time Zone people, just stay asleep when this is on live and just catch the recording. Oh, I'm sorry. Exclusively on the Chris Bass YouTube channel. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Showing the Lights Out here on this lovely Monday. And uh, shout out to Cameron12, who's in the chat, saying, when does the game start? I will get to that, Cameron. Just stay tuned, because we're going to recap what took place on yesterday. Because you see, we are down to the final 14. It's the semifinal best out of five. We have the New York Derby that was at the Las Vegas Aces last night. And it was up two to one, one more win, and they will be thrown the defending champs. Or uh, were the champs fought off with elimination? Then you had the Connecticut Suns hosting the Minnesota Lynx with the series, with the Lynx up to one, trying to get to the finals. So let's see what happened. The New York Liberty handle business, the Connecticut Suns defending home court. Man, what a day. What a day it was Sunday with a lot of football that happened too. But I was tuning into the, my WNBA while watching football at the same time. Let's go. Um, the run for the defending champs is over. There will be no three-peat this go-around. Now, we still got Kansas City Chiefs in the NFL. They might be the ones that can do a three-peat, but it won't be the Las Vegas Aces. And you see that fourth quarter. Oh, my. What a fourth quarter for the New York Liberty, 23 to 11. That's your difference right there. The New York Liberty beat them by 12 in the fourth quarter. The New York Liberty won by 14 in the entire game. That is your difference right there in the fourth quarter. Shooting was not very good, especially for the home team. There was no home cooking for the Las Vegas Aces as they shot 23.3% from three-point range. The New York Liberty, they shot 41.7 from three-point range, you know, and 48 rebounds to 27. The New York Liberty out-rebounded the Aces by 21. When the threes are falling and you out and you out rebound a team on the road, you can win games just like the New York Liberty did to close out this series on the road in Vegas. Some can say revenge has been served, okay? Because the Las Vegas Aces they won the title at Barclays, you know, in front of the New York crowd. That's how they went back to back last year. Now you can say the Las Vegas Aces saw their season in on their home court while in Las Vegas by the team that they beat in the NBA Finals, the New York Liberty. As you can see, the the big three of Brianna Stewart, John Crell Jones, and Sabrina Nescu all showed up for this game. Stewie, 19 points, 14 boards, five dimes. John Crell Jones, JJ, with 14 points and six boards. And then Brianna Stewart, after a, a abysmal, in a quiet game three, she bust out in game four, 22 points, five from eight from three point range, seven for 14 from the field. Also gave you seven assists. MVP, Asia Wilson, 19 points, 10 boards. Kelsey Plunk gave you 17, but Jackie Young was off. One for 10 from the field, one for six from three-point range. Chelsea Gray, three for eight from the field, one for four from three-point range, only seven points, but six times. The, the stars for the Vegas Aces didn't show up on this one in game four on yesterday. So their season is done. New York is back in the WBA finals, and they are looking to capture that elusive WBA championship. But you have to wait because the Connecticut Suns, as you can see here, they decided to make sure this, this series goes the distance. They was down 2-1 at home, and they fought back and got a 10-point win to send this, this series back to Minnesota for a game five winner. Take all game five for a spot to go to New York to take on the New York Liberty. 
And how did you and how did this happen? You say, Well, the Connecticut Sun, they did get the home cooking for shooting the ball 53.7% from the field, 53.3% from three point range. When you're shooting above 50% from the field and three point range, you're going to win a lot of games. And that's what the Connecticut Suns did to get this one. All right. Deron Obama, 18 points, eight boards, four dimes. Alicia Thomas, 18 points, eight boards, 11 assists. She almost had another triple double in the playoff. That would have been her fifth. I think, which just leads the WNBA in playoffs triple double. Sorry, she just a monster. All right, you even got you got Hayes that came who was in the starting lineup. They switched. They put Hayes in. They took Maria Marbury out. Twenty points being a starting lineup. You can't ask for much more. You cannot ask for much more than twenty points from your guard. And then the Indigene Carrington, fifteen points. You got you got production. From everybody that you need to get production from. It's a good team. Every good team win for the Canadian Suns. Now we have a game five. And you, those of you who want to know what game five? Game five is tomorrow. 8 p.m. ESPN 2. Whoever wins takes the trip to New York for the WBA Finals. But this is going to be a very interesting game five. Because this is it. This is all she wrote. It's when I go home. This is what we love. This is pretty much the WBA's game seven. We want to compare it to the NBA. This is the WBA's game seven, which is a game five. And uh, Cameron says, I hope Lynx win this game. Not only him, but Farrell X also said, Liberty, the Minnesota Lynx will bounce back. So we got two people going for the Minnesota Lynx to get to the WBA finals. No Connecticut Suns love I see here. I, okay, Connecticut is on the outside. But this is going to be a game. I want to see them all put it on the floor because Nafisha Carter, she, she found after what took place in game one, when they when they, when they put the clumps on her, she came out busting. She came out busting. She she went off on game two to make sure they got that uh, tied the series up. Went on the road, made sure they took the series lead, but Connecticut responded in game four. And the winner of this game so that's show y'all know the winner of this game will meet the new york liberty thursday october 10th 8 p.m espn so once tuesday ends look forward to thursday because that is the start of the wba finals it is a best of five just like the semifinals it's a best of five so three more wins for new york they are champions four more wins for connecticut or minnesota and they are champions so I'm looking forward to this. I'm looking forward to game five tomorrow, 8 p.m. I will be watching closely and intently as I am a New York Liberty fan. I want to see who we get. And those of you who remember, I said this a while back when we get ready for the playoffs, that the New York Liberty most likely will have to go through Minnesota to win the title. So it'll be fitting for it to be Minnesota because Minnesota has owned the New York Liberty. And those of you who are out there and you were out there on Facebook and social media was clapping at the uh the chance for losing to new york i need y'all to pay attention because if you were paying attention the new york liberty has beaten the las vegas aces six out of the seven games this season three and one no three and oh in the regular season three and one in the semifinals so those of you who want to complain about the ace about the aces having aj wilson kelsey plum chelsea gray jackie young all being olympians and back to back defending champions you gotta we gotta understand how the season went for them when it came to against new york they had a hard time playing against New York, and they showed. That's why they're ousted and not getting a three-peat. Now, for the New York Liberty, as a New York Liberty fan, I want the Lynx. You know why I want the Lynx? Because we haven't beaten the Lynx. We beat the Lynx. I think the Lynx have. If you look at the regular season, it will say, I think it will say 2-1 Lynx. Because the Commissioner Cup game doesn't count in a regular season. So to me, it's more like 3-1 Minnesota because they beat us on our home court. Well, it wasn't really our home court. We went to Staten Island to hold that game. One at the Barclays Center. Nevertheless, it was in Staten Island. It was still in New York. They beat us in our own home state. So I need I need the I need the New York Liberty to show that they can beat the Minnesota Lynx because hey, I know it'll say regular season, it'll probably say two one. But they don't count the commissioner's cup. So I'm saying 3-1 as Farrell puts in the chat for me. Minnesota owns the series 3-1 over the Liberty. 
See, they didn't count the Commissioner Cup, so you got to add the Commissioner Cup game into that. Okay, I don't want to throw anybody off. Whatever you see, if you go and you see the regular season, they're not going to show the Commissioner's Cup game, so you got to add that game to it. We only beat them one time this whole season, and I don't like that. I don't like that one bit. Now, on the Connecticut side, Connecticut been, Connecticut is in the same situation that we is with Minnesota. Connecticut feels that way when it comes to New York. New York's been kicking their ass for the past two seasons. Okay? And that's one of the reasons why they went and got and traded for Maria Marbury, because they get blown by us. The physicality, we can handle the physicality. And the thing is, we can score with the physicality. Connecticut was having trouble scoring with the physicality. So I had to bring somebody in, like a Maria Marbury, that can open the floor. And when she's been in Connecticut, that's what she has done. So Connecticut feels like us when it comes to Minnesota. And we it's, it's going to be an interesting finals. I just know that. Either Connecticut going to get out of there and we're going to want to show the world that they can beat New York or Minnesota get in. And Minnesota want to show they can still dominate New York while New York says, no, we can beat you. We know we can beat y'all. We just have to prove it. So Thursday, that's the start of the WBA Finals. But first order of business is tomorrow, 8 p.m. ESPN 2, Game 5, Suns links up in the Twin Cities of Minneapolis, Minnesota, the Target Center. Winner moves on to Thursday to face the New York Liberty in Game 1. All right. And that will do it for this episode of Shooting Lights Out. Thank y'all for tuning in. Thank y'all for watching. If you're watching on the Playmakers of Our Network YouTube channel, hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification. So anytime we go live, you know what we're talking about, whether it be bearing down the great down for college football, which will be Wednesday, Ramley Talk, which is Thursday, or even Shooting Lights Out when we step into the WBA final. So thank y'all for tuning in. Thank y'all for subscribing. I will catch y'all with the WBA finals. Okay? Deuces. Stop here. You can't stop now. You gotta keep going. Through all your trials and your tribulations, you gotta keep pushing. Now, finish your camp. Yeah, gotta get it out the mud, that's the only way to win. Who am I to point the finger like I never ever seen? Been through the ups and downs like the letter in. They don't let you through the door, better kick that again. Cause that's the only way to win. That's the only way to go. Gotta get it out the mud. Gotta get it out the flow. Thank you for tuning in today's episode. If you want to follow the podcast, you can follow it on all streaming platforms, including Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, and a whole lot more. This has been Shooting the Lifestyle.